Assalamu alaikum everyone, it's Mr. Fahad. Today we will continue with the second lesson in chapter 3, the derivative. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to find the derivative of a function at a given point, and then to sketch the graph of a function using that of its derivative, and to understand the relationship between continuity and differentiability, and to study the differentiability of a function at a given point. So the main concept of the lesson, uh, unfortunately, is in another video, which is the previous video, 3.1, where I explained where we derived the uh, definition of the derivative from. So basically, it's the limit when h approach to zero for the slope of the secant line between the point A and a closer point, which is A plus h. As the distance between these two points approach to zero, we can uh, get the derivative, which is uh, the slope of the tangent line. If the limit exists, we say that uh, f of x is differentiable at uh, x equals a. And here's an alternative uh, a form, which you can see here, uh, basically the slope uh, formula, the limit when x approach to a, so you have x is a point near a, as this point approach A, the slope will be the slope of the tangent line. So the derivative is the slope of the tangent line, written here as a limit. Okay, here's an example. Use the definition of the derivative to compute the derivative of this function. Well, using the definition, we have to use the limit, but just uh, for your information, you will be able to do this using the rules of uh, derivatives. So in the next lesson, you can use the power rule to do this. And this will be um, 2 times 3, which is 6x, and that's it. So the derivative will be 6x. All right, so applying in the definition of the derivative, f of x plus h, you'll uh, plug in x plus h instead of x, and this will be 3 x plus h all squared plus 1 minus f of x over h. And now we will expand the squared of sum here. This will be the first squared plus 2 times the first times the second plus the second squared. And then distribute 3 inside. And now combine like terms and cancel out uh, 3x with negative 3x, 1 with negative 1. You'll be left with this expression. And now take h as a common factor, cancel it out with the bottom. And now we have limit when h approach to 0 for 6h plus 3h. Substitute h with 0. And then y equals, or the derivative, equals 6x. And since you have the function of the derivative, now you can substitute any uh, point directly in this uh, formula. For example, find the derivative of um, at 1 or the derivative at negative 3, you'll just substitute the number in uh, instead of x. Now, um, this doesn't make sense, I mean the method, because again, you will, you will uh, learn uh, an easier way to do it, the power rule, which will overwrite this, unless the question stated that uh, you have to solve using this uh, method. Okay, here's a couple of examples. I encourage you to pause the video, try to do it on your own using the, the definition of the derivative or the alternative formula, and then come back to check your answer. All right, so the easiest way to solve this using your calculator, so a derivative of 2x plus 3 at x equals 1, and that's it. You have the derivative value, which is 2. You can do the same for the second question. So the answer for the second question is 12. Okay, now let's do it using the definition and we will use the alternative formula here. Um, the limit when x approach to a, f of x minus f of a over x minus a, and you'll substitute um, the value of a with one. So um, substituting the values and now simplify, distribute the negative sign here you'll get 2x plus 3 minus 5, and this will be 2x minus 2 over x minus 1. Now try to take uh, 2 as a common factor, 
cancel out uh, the uh, factor with the bottom and you'll be left with two. So again, the derivative here is two. For the second one, just substitute f of x minus f of two and then um, simplify. So distribute the negative sign and try to combine uh, the numbers. Take three as a common factor and then factor out the difference of two squares. X squared minus four is X minus two, X plus two. And these will cancel out, you'll be left with three. Um, at X equals two, this is three times four, which is 12. If you did it correctly, great work. Let's move to the next um, slide. And here we will talk about differentiability. So if the function has a derivative, at a point, then the function is differentiable at that point. We say it's differentiable. It means that the slope of the tangent line, which is again the limit of the slope here, exists. And um, it should exist from both sides, okay? The function is differentiable at that point, if the, this limit exists. Now, uh, for continuity, and we studied this previously, the limit from the right, from the left should uh, be the same so the limit exists and it equals the image of the function so for the function to be continuous the limit should be the same as f of a now the relationship between these two differentiability implies continuity what do you mean by this if the function is differentiable this means it must be continuous okay it also means if the function is not continuous, then the function is not differentiable at that point. But the converse does not hold. So it doesn't work vice versa. Meaning not all continuous functions are differentiable. Such as the case of sharp corner, vertical tangent, and cusps. So to sum this up, the relationship between continuity and differentiability um, you can just um, focus on the theorem. If f is differentiable at x equals a, then f is continuous at that point. And this diagram shows the cases where it's not differentiable. So if it's not continuous, it's not differentiable. This is understandable, right? But if it's continuous, then there's three cases. These special cases, so vertical tangent line, where the derivative from the right, from the left, are not the same corner um, in the case of absolute value the intersection point the derivative from the right from the left different signs and with the cusp for example the cube root of x uh, basically at that point there is a vertical tangent line so i guess you have to memorize these three cases now before we continue please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel as a reminder we offer private and group online math lessons on Zoom, where we cover all UAE national curricula American and British curriculums. We also have the best MSAT math test preparation course with a 50% discount for groups. The first session is always free. So if you are interested in a free lesson, click the link in the description below. To book a lesson you can always send us a direct message on Instagram at Mr. Mathematics. Okay with that said let's get back to our lesson. So once again, these are the cases where the function is not differentiable. So when we say not differentiable, we mean that the definition of the derivative, which is the limit when x approach uh, uh, zero, um, does not exist. Let's uh, take an example. Show that the function is not differentiable at x equals two. And you can see we have a piecewise defined function. So the easiest way is to do the derivative. From the left side, it's zero, constant. And uh, from the right side, it's two. So since they disagree, then it's not differentiable. Now let's use the definition of the derivative. So we will investigate the derivative by evaluating the one side limit. So from the right side, the limit when h approaches to zero, f of a plus h, which is in this case two, minus f of 2 over h. Substitute from the right side, you'll substitute in 2x, and this will be 2 times 2 plus h, minus 4, and these will cancel out. Now simplifying this, we will get 2. 
All right, from the left side, you'll substitute in the other formula, which is 4, and this uh, basically is 0. So you can see the limit from the left side is different from the right side. Therefore, the definition of the derivative does not exist. And we say that the function is not differentiable at this point. Well, if you check the graph, you'll see there's a sharp corner at x equals 2. So this is the case whenever you have such a question asking to check for the differentiability at a, a given point, you have to do it from both sides. Now the last concept in the lesson, giving the graph of the function, can you sketch a plausible graph of the derivative? Well, in here you have to analyze the behavior of the function, if there's any discontinuities, any turning points. So for this graph, I can see it's increasing and then you have um, slope of the tangent line zero because it's a horizontal tangent line. And then it's decreasing, so the slope will be negative. And then again, the slope is zero here. And then increasing, the slope will be positive. So I will just um, put on the number line the behavior of the slope. And then I will try to translate it into uh, signs for the uh, derivative function. So if it's increasing, again, the slope means um, it's positive for the derivative because the derivative is the slope of the function at negative 2 since we have a horizontal tangent line it will be 0, so the slope is 0 and then decreasing minus and you got that point, right? Now Using this number line, we will try to sketch the derivative. So it will be negative, meaning it's below the x-axis in between these two points, and then above x-axis uh, larger than 2 and less than negative 2. So the easiest way to do this with a smooth curve, and this is um, a parabola shape, it makes sense, because the graph here of the function is 2 or 3 maybe, and then the derivative is 2 power 2. The derivative will always be 1 degree less than the function. Now in the last example, giving the graph of the derivative, can you sketch a plausible graph of the function? Well, try to pause the video, sketch f of x, and then come back to check your answer. In this question, we are doing the opposite of what we did in the previous example. And since we have the derivative, we will try to write the areas where it's positive or negative, so uh, where it's above the x-axis or below the x-axis, and then the intersection points with the x-axis, the value will be zero, right? And now from these values, which represent the slope, I can then analyze the behavior of the function. So if the slope is negative, this means that the function, the original function is decreasing. If it's positive, it means it's increasing. And at zero, I know I have a turning point. So taking these into consideration, I can then sketch the graph of f of x. Once again, this is just a feasible graph. Someone can have different uh, graph, but the main characteristics of the graph will be the same. All right, that's it. For today, don't forget to memorize the special cases. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.